Well, good afternoon. Welcome to this week's Power Hour. This is Rob. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Let's go ahead and make sure you all can hear me. If you would please type in the number one in the chat box in the comment section. Let me know that you can. I would greatly appreciate it. Nothing worse than talking to myself for the next little bit and no one hearing a word I say. That would be like being at home. It's called kids, right? (laughs) Oh, goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I hope it is a great day. Hope it's been a good trading day for you. Uh, as we go ahead and get started here, uh, keep in mind that everything we look at is for educational purposes only. Nothing's meant to be advice or recommendations. We got a lot of great stuff coming up, right? This week, the 26th, uh, is Trading You. Monster Market Moves is next week. Uh, Mastermind Group is Tuesday night. That is tomorrow. Uh, Power Hour Trading Coaches Playbook are on regular schedule. Uh, how not to get your ass kicked is set up for starting next week. And then power option plays covered call explore. Well, power option plays regular schedule covered call explore. I will be out of town. So I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to do it Wednesday night or if I'm going to do it Saturday again, like I did this week. And then e-mini think tank. Brandon is out of town this week, Friday. He's here in New York, which is why we're having to reschedule some of this uh, from our regular dates is because we are teaching the live events in New York. So there's still a few seats, not many. I think there's one or two seats left in the event in New York. Uh, and in the, the Inner Circle Mastermind, if you're in one of those groups and want to attend the live event uh, on Friday, it is part of your subscription. Make sure you get, reach out to Suzanne or Amelia, Lee, let them know that you want to come so we get you on the schedule for that. And here's our follow us page. Please make sure you follow along with the various things we do, guys. I am doing videos constantly. Constant, uh, Sean and his team are, are posting things over and over and over again. So you want to keep up with that. Make sure you're checking out Trading Like a Boss. Uh, come and check out the Market Mornings Live. We are simplifying that. I'm hoping within the, by next week, we've got that page done, where when you go to the banner in the members area, and you, you'll you see in that members area, you'll see the banner. And on the banner, it's going to show you Market Mornings. You'll click on it, and it'll take you to a page that will have the link for Facebook and the link for YouTube. Uh, and the link hopefully for LinkedIn on there and any others that we add. So you just click on that and it'll take you right into through that platform that you want to view it on. So there's, there's no searching, there's no looking, there's no thinking. It's done for you. Okay, perfect. Thank you there, Lee. Uh, Monster Market Movers, guys, here's our Halloween special for our Monster Market Movers that is in November. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, too busy. You know, I'm out of town two different weeks this month. And the last month of the last week of the month is when we've got our live event. So there was no time to do the monster market movers at the end of November, which I always try to get it close to Halloween. Uh, it was impossible to make happen. So I moved it to November 2nd, same week as Halloween, right? 31st, uh, but $29 folks for the very first one, right? So take advantage of that. I've got a great announcement we're going to make there in uh, at this event uh, of some of the things that we're doing, some of the changes and, and surprise, surprise, surprise that we've got planned for there. So $29, it's normally $199. So it's a great discount. Uh, happy Halloween. All right. Oh, don't want to share that one with you just yet. So with that, what trades did you do today? Talk to me, show me, share with me exactly what you did. Drop them in the chat box. Let me know what it is. This is your accountability partner. This is your accountability call, right? Tell us what you did. You know, we do this every morning in market mornings. Individuals put their trades out there of what they did. I love that Robert put his out this morning that said, hey, I did, a, a, I think it was five credit spreads on Monday. Then I was busy painting the house. Uh, came back at the end of the week. Everything was profitable, just like it was supposed to. I'm making money even when I'm not there watching it, which is wonderful. Right? I love that. Love that. All right, Brenda said no trades today. There you go. That's okay. It's okay. It's an interesting day. That's for sure. So let me bring Trade Station up for us here. A lot of stuff open right now. Sean's made some great adjustments to what we're doing in here. Uh, Paula said no trades today. Um, bum, bum, bum. Let's look at Tesla. There you go. Scott said half gap fill on spy. Quick ROI. Ka-ching, baby. Ka-ching. There you go, Scott. Great job, man. Great, 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 great job. Killing it there. I love it. Uh, PK said, did the FX spread $100 on the SPY, $400. Awesome. Great, great, great trade there. Great trade. Here you go. Uh, uh, just for you, PK. There you go. Bam. Crush.
crushed it, baby. Good job. Absolutely good job. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Uh, Trip said, IBM to the upside, up two points so far. Great job, Trip. There you go. Ah! Woo! Baby. I love the rob and the hammer. There you go, PK. Me too. It's awesome. And the best part of it, I got the control right here. <laughs> it's on my screen I, uh, or a little keypad I've got here. Got to remember what all the little buttons are that Sean set up there. But, um, but it's awesome. It's awesome. All right, as you guys are dropping your trades in, remember, Amelia is our head trader, right? And she does a phenomenal job in her Trade Watch Alerts program, right? So here's the very first trade um, of uh, hers today that she wanted to share with us. So you'll see that it's a vertical spread, says down here, bottom vertical, right? You can see the time, 9.45 was the entry uh, to this trade. She did three contracts. It's a vertical spread, so it is a credit spread that she did there, right? It's on a Vago. She has the 450, 447 half spread. Uh, so you've got $2.50 of increment between the two strike prices. That's important to know. She got $2.10 on this spread today. Two fifty dollars is the max risk, right? I went through some of this this morning. Um, in the market mornings, the max risk is $2.50, the difference of the two strike prices. Her maximum risk is take that $2.50 and subtract from it whatever premium you received. She got $2.10. Her risk is $0.40 cents in this trade. That's the most it can cost her. One contract, $40. 10 contracts, $400. If she's right on 10 contracts and gets it to zero, she makes $210 per contract times 10 2100 dollars right now amelia doesn't hold them until the end and i love the strategy that we work out there inside of uh, the trade watch alerts so at 9 50 this morning about five minutes later she went ahead and closed that position out and she had a debit of 20 cents what so she took in two dollars here, let me actually bring that back. I forgot I had it on that screen. So here's the numbers, right? You can see them right here. She got out of that trade at 9.50 this morning, and she got out of the 20 cent debit. That means she kept a dollar ninety. One contract, you're up $190. Now, you needed to have $40 to do that, that one trade. And let's say you had a very small account. You had $100, a few hundred dollars. You want to put a lot at risk in it, whatever it was. You needed $40. And of that $40 investment, you made $190, right? I mean, we are talking about a 475% rate of return in five minutes. Do you guys like this? Can you smash the like button? Give me a thumbs up, folks. Uh, you know, yes, uh, whatever, you know. Ah! Amelia, we definitely got to crush it, baby. Boom. Right, she killed it on this Avago trade. And you want to know the best thing? Amelia and I were on a phone call after a meeting we had already had. Her and I stayed on a phone call talking about trade watch alerts and some things that she wants to add to it, some some new pieces she wants to add in there. Uh, now with her newfound freedom of time, more freedom of time that she is semi-retired. Uh, and she's doing this while we're on the phone. She goes, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, let me, oh, okay, I'm in. All right, so let's keep going. And we talk, talk, talk. She goes, wait, 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 me, I got to get out. And I mean, it was awesome, right? Absolutely awesome. So great trade there, Amelia. Absolutely great trade. Uh, let's see. To the moon, baby, to the moon. Great job. Awesome, cool stuff. Good, 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 good. Yeah, Mel, all right, all right, there you go. Hey, appreciate that. Lee dropped in a link to Trade Watch Alerts. So that was trade number one. Trade number two, right? It is another vertical spread. It came in at 946. And this was on applied material, AMAT. Right? She got a, a, a difference there of 8081. So only $1 increment, maximum risk, $100. Her risk, the $100 minus the credit she took in. She took in 63 cents. That means 37 cents is the maximum risk. She's got a 33% rate of return on this puppy uh, right out of the gate, right? Or 66. 66%, right? 
Amazing, right? Assuming it's all it all works for her. And that was at 946 this morning. At 954, she closed out the AMAT trade and she gave back 30 cents. So she kept 33 cents. One contract, 33 bucks, 10 contracts, $330. Right? Not bad, I gotta say, not bad at, at all. Uh, it, and she didn't need a whole lot of cash to do it. Folks, we're looking at 89% in eight minutes on this trade. 89% in eight minutes. It is a great trade, great rate of return. Did we get 475%? No, those are anomalies. They're not an everyday ordeal. Absolutely not. Absolutely not, right? But overall, she had a good setup there. Uh, I didn't get a whole lot done. Mondays are tough. I managed some positions today that were covered positions, things I did not write on Friday. Uh, and the only one that I did today was one out of our um, market mornings, which was on Tesla. Tesla got uh, an announcement came out on Tesla that uh, the stock had dropped because Tesla had dropped the price of two vehicles in China. So they saw a 3% drop or something like that. So the news was to do a bear call spread for me because I trade Tesla. It's one of the stocks on my list that came up today that I trade. It's one of the power option play stocks. Uh, based on that, we went ahead and uh, I looked at the option on that and I wound up with the, so if we look at the timing on this, right? Here's Tesla. So we gapped down right on the open and I was in this trade fairly close to the open, right? I got the 215 puts about eleven and a half dollars, right? Right on this candle. And then what happened? We just chug along and we chug along and we, life is moving well. Man, we take a nice drop there. I love the move to the downside that we had. Right? Let me grab a drawing tool and make it a little bit easier. I love the, from the gap down, we just keep getting this drift and we get this move up and we hang at the moving average. And I'm kind of like this. All right, what's going on? And we drift off one more candle and this next candle, we get an explosion. And about here in the price of the candle is where I pulled the trigger and said, that's it, out, time to go, uh, get out of that trade. And we got out about uh, $15, roughly there. So it was about a four and a half dollar move on the option price. Uh, it's drifted sideways then, and then finally got a, a little bit more of a pop higher, which means the stock is going up, right? So the I mean, uh, stock's going back down, right? So, uh, well, this is Tesla. Stock's going back up, right? This is the price of the stock, not the option. So stock's going back up. We're out of the trade on that candle. Call it a day, four and a half dollars. Life's not horrible. One contract, you needed $1,150 to make 400 bucks. $450. 10 contracts, you needed $4,500. I mean, uh, $11,500 to make 4,500 bucks. But if you make $4,500 on $11,000, you probably don't have to go to work today. Actually, for most of you, you probably don't have to go to work this week. I know most people don't make almost five grand a week. Some do. I didn't say nobody does. I said most people don't make $5,000 a week. Some do. Maybe you could get away with, I don't need 10 contracts. Or what if I did five contracts? That would be about two grand for the week. That's a hundred thousand dollar a year salary that you're not paying FICA, suing and fooey on. Taxes, right? Taxes. Right? You're not paying state, federal. You're not. You have tax. Don't get me wrong. It is taxed as ordinary income options. But if you know how to how to properly take deductions, there are ways that can help you to reduce what those numbers are. Right. So good job for Amelia. Good job to you guys out there. Uh, very happy with the Tesla trade. Wish I had more time today, but it's it is a Monday. Um, so PK, I entered Tesla on the open based on just based on the move that it made. I didn't wait for it to do anything. It made that move down, and that continuation happened. We got a quick stretch up and a pullback, and I took the bearish trade on it. So I was trading it purely off of the news that came out today, purely off of news, right? And all right, here here's the thing. All right. What what we're trying to accomplish here, what I am trying to accomplish here, what we do in market mornings, what we do here in power hour, all great stuff, all premium content, all to help you become better traders. 
right? This week, let me let me let me back up. For the last three months, I have worked very diligently on one of our options programs called Power Option Plays, and I'm looking to make some adjustments in there. One of our inner circle members had made a comment at one of our full day inner circle meetings, which takes us back to September, that uh, he was not getting out of pop enough because he and he realized he wasn't putting in enough time into it. I mean, I was so Roman had sent a message to him in, in our live class when he said that and said, well, I almost said his name. All you have to do is watch the videos, right? And the weekly videos I put out twice a week. And as a joke, of course, and, but that's just part of it. He wasn't really watching the videos. He's been subscribed, but he hasn't had the time to give it what he wants. Now he's all in. He's just digging in. He put a study guide together and, and so forth, right? So from that, uh, or with that, I had already been working on some changes that I want to make to power option plays. And the great thing about having a mastermind and or an inner circle, we have both, right? So you have mastermind, inner circles, that next tier up. Uh, having those students there, they are pretty darn good at what they do, right? So using that as a sounding board saying, hey, what about this? What about that? How do we make this change, this adjustment? What do you think about doing this and that? And that asking those questions has caused them to ask questions. And by the way, I do this with my own mastermind group, the two that I belong to, that I am a student of. I go there and I do the same thing when I share my strategies, my presentations of what I look to trade and so forth to get some feedback from them. And I've done that. And now I've come back and done it with our own inner circle and mastermind and got great feedback. And at this meeting coming up in um, on Friday of this week, we're going to finalize some of those things. Now, I tell you all this backstory to this because the goal here is to take what we have done in POP and simplify it 10 levels down from where it is now. I am going to reduce your time requirement every day to do your own analysis on 20 stocks. Well, I won't, on, we're gonna have a slightly smaller number of stocks. I'll give you an example, it's probably like 13, right? But on those 13 stocks, I'm gonna show you one thing to do first. The first thing you do on those 13 stocks, and this will cut your time down to somewhere about 10 minutes a day of analyzing your positions and finding something to trade for today or tomorrow, right? For this morning before the market opens, or you did it last night in anticipation of the market opening today, right? But you're going to do that work before the market opens, either at night before or the, in the morning before. You're going to spend about 10 minutes, and you're going to have a very clear, crystallized understanding of what you're trading that day, right? And all these things we do here, when I ask you to drop in your trades, the accountability factor, right? When I ask you to participate and do, does that make sense? Was this helpful today? When we do all of that, everything I do is data management, data consumption, data gathering, right? All right, so I did this. It didn't work. People didn't really like that. Don't do it again. Well, if you didn't participate, it's kind of like not voting, right? Oh, I can't believe that person won. But did you vote for the other person? Nah, it wasn't worth my time. Okay, well, there you go. You can't complain. You got to live with them for two years, four years, whatever it is, right? It's no different here. You got to vote. Your vote is put in the ones when I ask, participate when I ask. That's part of it. But we're going to take things and simplify them. And once we get it done, I'm going to introduce it in Power Option Plays. We're going to re-record. We'll probably do some of them live, maybe all of them, but we'll do some of it for sure live, uh, where people can ask the questions. Small segments, we're going to replace what's in the members area with something that's going in there now which is called our success path. And I'm going to walk you down a path of exactly what to do. Think of that winding road, that switchback trade. Think of that winding road where here's step one, here's step two, here's three, here's four, here's five, here's six. And these are, this is the way you're going to make it through that success path to get to the other side, to learn how to do this, to become successful at it, right? We're going to have people flocking into this in droves once they see what we're doing in the in this process and the changes we're going to make right i am so excited for what's coming up there and the excitement listen guys i've got it i trade it i do it i'm already doing this stuff so for me it doesn't make a difference i can go through all 20 candidates and power option plays in about six minutes and i'm done that's all it takes me right and and i've got a good clear path of what i do but i've been doing it so long you know i realized that the other day when i was at a training last week Someone asked how long I had been trading, and I said 1997. He said, Rob, you realize you have five black belts in trading? I'm like, what? What does that mean? 
He said, well, it takes five years to get a black belt. He said, you're at this 25 years and not even realizing I passed my quarter century this year. 25 years trading the market. Talk about dating myself, right? Now, we had someone get up on stage. The, the event that I went to, the owner of the company is 26 years old. And he said, I may be dating myself. And somebody yelled from the back of the room, you can't be 26 and say you're dating yourself. <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> you can't. It doesn't work that way, right? Yeah, so a lot of great things coming up, folks, right? You got to stick with us and you got to bear with us and you got to put in the work and the time. This is all meant to help you. And I can only do so much here. We get into some of those advanced trainings in our mastermind, our inner circle, the event Brandon's teaching this week. If you've got an opportunity to get there, you need to be there. Guys, jump on a plane, do what you got to do, get your butts to that event, all right? Okay, so let me switch this back over, I think. Nope, that's camera. There we go. All right. Perfection. Uh, let me see. We had some things in here. Paula said, I still don't understand spreads. Where can I learn our Wealth Builders HQ? So it all depends the level of how you want to learn it, Paula. That's really what it comes down to. Inside of Trading You, we have credit spreads. They're inside there. They're not part of our one trade away challenge purposely, but inside of trading you, we have credit spreads in there. And that is kind of a, you know, do for yourself, you know, follow through the process in there. You could ask some questions in the live trainings we do twice a month in trading you. The next step is, you know, where it's more helpful to use our mastermind group, right? Where here's the thing though, I need to just make it very clear. And it's not about scarcity. There's plenty of room in there for someone to fit. We're very cautious on if we allow a person in to that. We don't, there's no link that you can go register for it or subscribe. It doesn't work that way. You've got to go through an interview process. We want to make sure that we're a good fit for you and you're a good fit for us. Mastermind Inner Circle are two amazing groups. We'll do nothing to mess them up at all. So inside of Inner, uh, Inner Circle, well, Mastermind is where the first step is. Inside of Mastermind Group, there's a ton of trainings and you also get one-on-one -on -one coaching inside of mastermind group that you can say hey i don't quite understand this how do i do it and we'll put you with a coach like an amelia or a trip and they'll walk you through and explain exactly what the process is to get there and to get it done so it really just determines which or is determined by what way you're looking to do it right and the nice thing with mastermind group is every week we meet every monday night uh, for every Tuesday night, rather, Monday is in a circle. Every Tuesday night, we meet at 8 p.m. Eastern and go through a, a myriad of strategies like credit spreads, like covered calls, like naked puts, like directional trades. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, so Scott said, oops, missed my long-term entry for Tesla, wanted to buy some shares when Tesla hit 200. Okay, so... Um, yeah, we got there. And someone asked me that question the other day if I thought we were going to get back. And I thought we might. Um, I still am. I'm 20 percent of the shares I want on Tesla. I'm not quite there yet. Uh, but I think Apple, Amazon's earnings coming out tonight. I think some of that stuff and some of the big names, the meta, who I'm expecting bad numbers on meta and maybe bad numbers on Amazon and Apple, too, the way they're talking. Um, but with what's going on with the Fed, and some of the, the midterm elections and all of that, there may be a shift in how the market moves. We're going to have to see come de early December of what's going on there. So you, you may not get another chance at this level. But I agree, Scott. I think $200 was a great entry point. It's a good key level uh, to look for a bounce off of, which it did, right? It bounced right off of that. Um, PK said, you're a oh. Oh, cool. You're a boss coach. Thank you. Can't cannot wait to see this and pop. Oh, man, it's going to be awesome. Yep. Amazing for sure, Erica. I can't wait. Uh, Jim said, could Paula be asking why do spreads instead of directional trading? The answer should be to reduce risk. Can you find out? Can you find that in trading you? So again, in trading you is the strategy on uh, credit spreads. So yes, you can learn credit spreads in there. We've got a hour and 15 or hour and 30 minutes, something like that training on credit spreads inside of there so you can learn credit spreads inside of it but you still have to practice them you still and then that's where the sounding board of hey i've got inside the mastermind group i can ask the questions and then of course i can set up my one-on-one -on -one mentoring uh in there as well so 
And Jim, I saw your message. You were the first one in this morning. I forgot to acknowledge it, asking if we celebrated our one year anniversary for uh, Market Mornings, and we did not. Sean and I both spaced on it, so I appreciate it. It was this month. So thank you so much for that reminder, Jim. Uh, we probably need to do a happy anniversary thing, Sean, uh, inside of there. So you are welcome, Paul, Paula. Yep. No, cool. Thanks, Jim. I do appreciate it. All right. Excellent. So let's go ahead and let me bring back into presentation mode. Oh, where are we? Right there. Excellent. Trading with mixed earnings. So we normally pick this topic on a Wednesday so we can prepare emails and such to invite people to the, the day. There are times that we you know, change the topic along the way because something else has happened, but usually we're pretty good. I'm pretty good at picking what that is and knowing what's already happened with Tesla, knowing that Amazon and Apple are up on the chopping block tonight. And the question comes down to um, how much are they going to miss or beat earnings by? And the, the talk is they're going to miss. So they're going to have a bad announcement whether they miss or not. It may be, yes, we hit our earnings, but. And it's the but that can become the problem, right? So when we look at trading with mixed earnings, guys, you really have to look at overall what the S&P 500 is doing, which we're going to look at that next. What's the SPX looking like right now? Where is it going? Do I feel confident enough to say, uh, I'm bullish on the market or uh, uh I'm staying bearish on the market, right? You've got to make that ultimate decision there, or am I neutral and we're just going to day trade and not do anything directionally whatsoever uh, and just focus, focus, focus and change that and adjust that every day based on what the market's doing. So mixed earnings, guys, it really comes down to, it's a simple answer. If you are looking to trade earnings announcements, to me, you day trade them whenever possible, whether it's directional or credit spreads. The thing I don't like about directional on earnings is... When the announcement was made and the stock gaps one way or another, up or down, doesn't matter. Someone's got to react and adjust positions that they entered yesterday, the week before, and so forth, based on, oh, it dropped down $4. Now I'm underwater. I got to get out of this trade. Well, the market maker knows that, and ka-ching, they're jacking up the options price. Well, if they're jacking the options price up, do I really want to be buying a long option? And the answer is no. All right, Rob, so what if you sell options? Well, I could sell a naked put, but I'm not selling naked calls. So it comes down to then credit spreads, right, is the better choice to me unless you know that stock. If you know the heartbeat of that stock, Trip trades AMD, right? He trades IBM. He trades Micron, right? He can take any of those and get an earnings announcement and directional trade that position because he knows the heartbeat of that stock, right? Same thing. You don't want to trade uh, directionally from earnings uh, unless you have a good understanding of that stock. If you trade the, the you know Tesla and you know how they work, I love to, Tesla's become one of my favorite trading stocks lately. I am in that thing almost daily. Google, you get a great couple of dollar move on every single day on Google, right? Two, three, four dollar move daily, right? I love it. It's a great moving stock for a hundred dollar stock. I'll take it any day of the week, twice on Sundays. If we could trade on Sundays. No, no, I don't want to trade on Sundays or Saturdays either. I'm happy with five days. All right. So, but the earnings part of it, mixed earnings is not just going to be a result of today. If we have some yes, some no, some good, some bad, some go up, some go down, that mix is going to carry forward into the market. And it's a matter of managing all of this by learning to read the S&P 500. Once you can do that, man, you got it licked. You are crushing it when you can do that. And that's what it comes down to, being able to read the S&P. Right? So let's see what comments we have in here. Uh, they're both 27th. You're right, Karen. I, no. Is Apple 27? Yeah, they're both 27. Apple and Amazon, correct? Yeah, Amazon as well, correct? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so, yes, good catch. It wasn't today, it was this week. Right? I don't have my pop stuff with me today, which I have it on my tracking sheet. But you're right. Thank you for that, Karen. It is not today. It is the 27th. But we're going to see it happen. We're going to see that announcement come out same day, both companies within minutes of each other. So thank you for that. Uh, PK said, I think for me, with the spreads, it is about where to enter and where to exit like and pop. You have a definite exit strategy. You're out, you're, you're out if it goes against you 25% from where you entered. And I realize that that is part of it. Absolutely, PK. 
absolutely. So I'm working with somebody right now who's a credit spreads guru that I'm hoping to have him teach you guys some of what he does. Maybe we'll bring him into a class like this one day. We can kind of give you an overview of the things he does. But he is very, very much a vega, which is volatility, right? He is a vega trader when it comes to credit spreads. He uses vega to his advantage for picking the strike prices to get the best bang for his buck in that trade. Uh, and he does a really good job. So I'm, I'm in conversations with him now about coming in, uh, over and teaching some of that stuff for you guys. So we'll see where it goes. I'll let you know as it gets closer. Um, yep, 1027, 1027. Exactly, Jim. Yep, Microsoft 1025. Um, Google 1025. Uh, and Meta 1026. AMC, I thought you were putting AMC, but I got it after market close. Yeah, they're all after market close. Thank you for that. Yep, so 25, 26, 27, all this week, all going to be interesting days for sure. Okay, let's go take a look-see at the S&P 500. All right, there we go. So let me bring the S&P up. <clears throat> let's get rid of the orange bar. You only need that if you're in power option plays, otherwise you do not. All right, so let's look at what happened from last week. Uh, here we had the 18th. So this was Monday right here, the 17th, okay? So Monday, we had a nice move to the upside, bounced off of the eight moving average after the gap up. We gapped up on Tuesday, pulled back to the confluence of the 21 and the hesitation line, which is the 236 level, all right? And we had the 100-point level right below that, okay? So we pulled back to that level. We gap down. Now we got pinned between the 8 and the 21, right? So there's a pinch play going on there where we're stuck between very tight, tightening, actually, moving averages. We tightened a little bit more into Thursday. Friday, what a massive break to the upside on Friday. And that came off of potential ease from the Fed. Uh, we may be seeing them to start backing away. There's now a conversation leaning towards uh, for this for November, leaning towards half point instead of three quarter point. And I think I heard the other uh, this morning that they had already raised four points this year. Right. So now backing away from that three quarter point hit, even though Powell said he was only going to do that one time. Um, but last month we were looking at three quarter or one point. This month. It's three quarter or half point. So it's a tremendous shift from the Fed if we wind up in that direction. If there's no interest in a one point hike and we're three quarter half versus three quarter one, one point, uh, the directional has changed, right? Which should, which should suffice to give some lift to the market, right? We're up today about 41 points, great move. It puts us into an actual neutral bias, right? But we are not, we are not in a place to take directional trades to me right? We have been here before where we have gotten into what looked like a better move and then uh, slapped and get knocked in the opposite direction. It's like, holy Christmas, what the heck just happened, right? <clears throat> we don't know yet. We, we're planning on some mixed earnings, again, Apple, Amazon, but we're not there. We don't have the announcement. We're, this, this week, I think, is the largest S&P 500 announcers are all within this week's time period. Again, the Apples, the Amazons, the Googles, and so forth, right? All the big names, Microsoft, uh, are all there. So right now, what am I looking at? Well, we had a, a high, we had a lower high, and then we had a lower high. We had a low, and we had a lower low. And now we're on a bounce. Beautiful. If we can get above this, we already gotten above this high which is awesome. We need to get above this high right here. So now you're, you're stepping above that. You're not just getting above the last one, you're getting above the last two. If we enclose above that wick, puts us in that neutral bias, at that point, the eight will cross up through the 21-ish, right about there. And when that happens, it puts you that much closer to being able to take a directional trade. 
I really want to see this. Two things happen to take directional here. Bullish directional, let's say. I need the eight to close above the 55 moving average. That's right here, the brown line. And then I need the 21, <clears throat> excuse me, to close above the, I mean the eight to close above the 21, the pink to close above the green line. Why? Well, because that puts me in enough of a bullish bias that I could take a bullish directional trade. Really? Yes. Aggressive. See, a regular non-aggressive trade, meaning I could take a full trade, would be all the moving averages are in the right order. When we cross down here, right, we gapped and got below the, the eight. We're in a true bearish bias here on the 13th, right? True bearish bias. The eight was above, was below the 21. The 21 was below the 55. And then what happened? We started spreading out. We had a bigger span between the two moving averages. And you will always have the wider move between the higher numbers, the 21 and the 55, instead of the eight and the 13. There's just a narrower band or a narrower move inside of there. So we get above the 55 and the eight crosses above the 21. I can now take an aggressive series of contracts. Meaning if you normally take 10 as your regular trade, just to pick a number, you're going to want to reduce that number to four, two, one, whatever it is, you want to bring that number down, you are aggressive, you want to partake, but you don't want to have a lot of money at risk in the trade, which means you've, you're going to do some, just not everything. Until we get the moving averages in the right order, you are not interested, you should not be interested in taking a directional move that you're going to hold overnight, unless so I keep saying the word trade, a directional trade, a, unless it is an investment. You're buying this long term. That's a whole different story. That's a much different ball of wax. Much different ball of wax. Okay. So we're looking at the S&P 500 now. And if we look at the VIX, here, here's one of the changes we're going to see. You'll see now in power option plays, right? The VIX is color coded. There are three different colors on the VIX, right? There's yellow, there's green, and there is red, right? I'm finalizing the exact levels for them, but these are pretty darn close, okay? And what this does for me, what's happening here is in a glance, in a glance, I could look at this and say, all right, we are in a red zone on VIX, so we're high our vix is very high which means i know right up front when i see that red zone we are overpaying for our options period the end so let me ask all of you if i just told you options are overvalued what type of trade should you be looking at to take advantage of the overvalued option drop it in the chat box <clears throat> okay, a couple of you have it. There we go. Now they're coming in. Yeah, you're kitty kitty, right, Scott? <laughs> Selling. Selling positions. If you know that the market is overvalued, where do you get your biggest bang? When you sell and they pay you too much for the option. Right? The green zone for me, if I were a pure directional trader, man, my green zone would be down like super low right? Like 12, right? Because I'm paying almost nothing for the options. But if you do any selling, you don't want a 12. It's horrible for collecting premium. Horrible. It's terrible, right? So I've come to a compromise as to where. This is months of testing to come up with this. Months of changing these levels. <clears throat> and the important thing is, they're not set in stone today. And even when I do set them in stone on Friday, they're not going to be set in stone. They're just set in stone Friday. Things may change. I may have to move off of $29 for the bottom of the high zone there. And it may become 28. It may become 24. It may become 33. I don't have that answer, that information today. But that's why being in the trainings, you are hearing about this. You're learning that. You're sticking with it. Right? So we're up today. We're up today on overall on VIX, right? It pulled back a little from its highs, but we're up. And we ran right into one of the horizontal lines that I've given as far as support and resistance levels, okay? Absolutely. All selling positions. That is great. 
All right. So we're, we're at that point that this is where you're going to drop in the candidates that you want me to take a look at. What stocks do you want me to analyze for you? Drop them in, check them out. The more information you give me, the better off it is. If you can at least tell me what you're thinking, bullish or bearish, at a minimum, that would be very helpful. If you don't, I'm just going to analyze it the way that I see it. If you do, I will give you the info based on what you tell me, which could very well be, I wouldn't do a bullish trade on this. You're bullish, but I wouldn't do a bullish trade until it did that or before hell freezes over or whatever the other reason may or may not be. All right. So drop in the symbols you want me to take a look at. We've got a few minutes left and we will jump into those. All right. So the very first one is Q, 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 which is Brenda. Whoop, let's do that. Oh, before I do, before I, let's switch this over. Come on. You go to the watch list that has all symbols in it. So this way, at least I can go ahead and grab uh, all of my data, such as the Wilder's average true range and so forth. Okay. So you can see the entire fib. It's a nice fib on Q's. We are in a neutral bias on the Q's. We are nowhere near the eight crossing up through the 21 yet. Not without a massive move to the upside in a day or a couple of more days like this up. You can see five or six days sideways, we've still climbed higher, okay? So I love the, the 275.04 level, Brenda, that we're near. Uh, did you put anything out? Bullish to, previous, to a previous gap fill. Okay, so this gap fill right here is what Brenda's representing or talking about. We got close, not quite, but we got close there today, right? Uh, I'm all for that, Brenda. I love, if we, here, let me write the number down, 275.04. 27504. It's funny looking at the at the Q's as $275. It's just odd seeing it at that price. <laughs> uh, let's see. QQQ. All right, let's go ahead and snap a horizontal line. Two hundred seventy-five point oh four, I believe. Yes, C. Oh, looks like I was right there. All right, so now let me go back to the cues and let me show you what I'm trying to do. We opened up right about that level. We had a pullback and a bounce. Let's go see what the analysis shows us. Was there an opportunity in? So we closed below first candle. We closed back up. We closed below. We popped up. We came down. Uh, came down a little bit, big move down. Okay, here we go. Broke above, retested, bounced, boom, chakalaka. That, that, that is the entry. Don't make this complicated. Step one, draw the, write them down. Write them down. Step one, draw the daily fibs on your chart. Write this down. Draw the daily fibs on your chart. Step two, check if it needs fibbits which are Fibonacci pivots. Do you need to split any levels in half? So draw the fibs, check if it needs fibbits. Step number three, transfer the end of day lines onto your intraday chart and only on one chart, whatever your primary target is, uh, time frame is. If you trade off a five minute, do it on a five minute chart. Don't do it on a one. If you trade off a 15 minute, draw it on a 15, not on a five. One chart only. Right, so you're transferring that line over there. Color code them, match them up, whatever system you want to come with to know what that line is for, what it represents. Right, step th uh, four. Step four is wait for the stock to move through that line. So wait for the stock to move through that line, retest and bounce. As long as you are not in the forbidden time frames meaning lunchtime and so forth, go ahead and place the entry. Buy a call, buy a put, do a credit spread, whatever you choose to do. Naked puts, naked calls, if that's what you choose to do. I'm okay with that. You have to be okay with it, right? That simple process is what I use day after day after day after day after day. Okay? Over and over and over and over and over again. 
Mm. Pivots, are, so Paula, pivots are their own indicator. I don't mix them in with, with other charts. I use them as their own standalone indicator. I don't have them set up on here. I've got to download that template. And I'm having all kinds of problems with trade stations since they eliminated all companies giving out free indicators. I had one, person's pivots, and they no longer work. And every day I get this, this spinning thing at the top of my screen that says downloading indicators, and they're not there. I try to delete it. I tried deleting the indicator. It says, sorry, you can't delete the indicator. Call this number. You call the number and it says, yes, we'll be with you. Your message number 41 or whatever it is. I have no idea, right? So I've been waiting to try to fix that component of it, but so I don't have it on here the pivots. I have my own pivot points that I need to transfer over. <clears throat> but pivot points are standalone. I'm going to trade off of pivots. I primarily do that, Paula, with SPY and the Qs. That's my two biggest pivot trades day in and day out is right there. Those two. Sure, Brenda. So you got what I'm talking about, right? Brenda, of what we're up to then at this point, five steps. Notice it's a FIB number, no less. Five steps and we're there, right? If we go back, so you didn't take that today, let's say, Brenda. Now you're at a point of what do I do? You need to pull back towards the 275 and a bounce to be able to take the trade. So all the rules I just gave you, they apply back here again. They apply back tomorrow when the market opens again. It's the exact same thing. Draw the fibs, check for fibbits, transfer the lines, wait for a breakout, a retest and a bounce, enter the trade. It's all the same exact thing. Some, some people just, they want to make it hard, right? And I know you don't really want to make it hard, but guys, I am as guilty of this as anybody else of just banging your head over and over again on the same exact thing. Ouch, that hurts. I shouldn't do it again. Ouch, that hurts. I probably shouldn't do that again. Ouch, that hurts. I can't believe I did it again, right? We just do the same thing again and again and again. Einstein's definition of insanity. All right, so I hope that helps, uh, Brenda. Um, and will it fill the gap? It, well, if you get the bullish bounce, then yes, you can look for that gap fill. Absolutely. But you're not that far away. You said 279. So you're not that far from it. All right. John said, considering Google naked put around 98 ish to obtain and holding the stock. All right, John, if you haven't heard me talk about it already inside of, you know, mastermind in a circle type stuff. Um, which guys, that's where you hear my strategy for buying long positions and so forth, right? So if we look at Tesla, um, darn, I didn't have the option chain opened open. Let's see if it populated. It did not. Okay, so let me do this. Tesla, aha, okay. So let me go back and look here at Tesla. Okay. So not Tesla. My bad. Why am I saying I'm just, I'm stuck on Tesla. I'm doing naked puts on Tesla right now and on Google, actually, on both. Okay. So we'll go back and we'll look at it on Google on TradeStation. Okay. So let me open the option chain up. All right. Let's get the option for it. Okay. So now when I look at, when I look at uh, Google, all right, let me go back to Omega charts. When I look at Google, I want to see something down below that $100.50 level. Right, which is a $100. So 101. I want to be somewhere down below, blah, below that 101 level. But I really want to see something that has a delta of about 20. That's my ideal delta of about 20. So I have a 19 delta on the $95 puts on Google. I want to be down below 101. 
we're down here at 95. So I've got one line or one blue zone to get through and another fibbit to break through also to get before I'm underwater, before I get can get exercise in this position, right? We're looking at 95s. So the question, and you've got to ask this question, any of you that are trading naked options and you're not asking this question are making a huge mistake. If I sold the ninety uh, the ninety five dollar put, okay, and let's just show one contract, right? It's mid price is ninety seven cents. We're going to say a dollar because it's real easy math, okay? If I sold this, is there a chance the stock gets put to me? And the answer is yes. C. Uh huh. Whatever phraseology you want to use, there is an opportunity, a chance that this gets put to you. So what do you do? What do you do? The question is, am I okay owning it at 95? Well, it's trading at 102. They're going to pay me a dollar to buy it at 95, which means if they paid me a dollar, my cost basis is down at 94. So am I okay? Yes. Yes, I am okay. Yes, I am okay. Now, earnings coming up. Caution, right? Um, with that. But am I okay? Yes, absolutely. I'm okay with it. I am just fine and dandy with that. I love this setup. I crush it on naked puts over and over and over again around earnings season. I don't think there's a better way to trade right now than, than taking advantage of these. Right? You got higher premiums. They have been higher for weeks. Right, let's take advantage of it yet again. Uh, actually, let's do this. Let's bring this here. Let's bring this here. So, John, answer your question is yes, without a doubt. Tesla. Watch, 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 watch this. Crushing. If you want to own Tesla, if you want to own Tesla, and we go look at, just based on Delta, we go look at a, a, 20, a 20 Delta. So I've got 18. So on an 18 Delta, which is the 192 and a half, I am at, here, let's go ahead and sell this position. I'm at a dollar, we'll call dollar 75. That's 192 and a half. Okay, we'll just say one, okay, we'll say we get a dollar and a half for it. Forget about the 75, dollar and a half is what we get. All right, and you'll see why in a second. So that means if someone makes me buy it at 192 and a half and they paid me a dollar and a half, I'm gonna drop my cost basis down to 191. It's trading at 207 right now. So 191, 201, that's $10 plus another six. That's 16, $16 lower than it's trading at right now. If I wanna own Tesla and I do, guess what I'm doing? I'm writing naked puts. But Rob, the market's going down. I want to own it anyway. Guys, I'm not going to play in the very bottom. And I, for me, I am very hard-pressed of putting a full trade on of however many ever hundreds or thousands of shares you might want to buy of putting a full trade on all at one price. This is my way of dollar cost averaging in. But what if this is the lowest it gets? Does that mean you're done? No, it'll move up. It'll find a key level. It'll bounce and I'll buy more there. It'll move up. It'll pull back. It'll bounce. I'll buy more there. So that's my strategy for, for, for going long on positions that I want to own. Amazon, Google, and Tesla are the three. I own all of them right now. And I don't buy a lot of stocks, but these are long-term holdings. And oh, by the way, if they make you buy it right now, right, let's say you had to buy the stock at 192.5. Well, let's say you bought it, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. You bought the stock and you're going to rent it out now. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna find a 40 Delta. I've got the 212 and a half, we're about $5 away from where we are now. And I'm gonna rent out Tesla stock at a 39 Delta for $4.10. $4, call it just four bucks per share. Guess what that does? 91 and a half, drops my cost basis down to 387, 187. I do next week for another $4, 183. Next week for another 171, nine. See what I'm going here? There's a lot of opportunity on these. You should be looking at not buying stock anymore. 
You should be looking at selling naked puts, make them pay you up front. And if anything, they make you buy it at a price lower than it is right now, which you were going to buy it anyway. As long as you're doing it in 100 share increments, you're good to go. If you were going to buy 10 shares at a time, which is nothing wrong with that, that's not the way to do it. Not with options. Um, ha, I love that. Jennifer said, LOL, good duh moments happen. <laughs> okay, good. Good, 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 good. Good, Brendan said that's how she was trade, looking to trade the cues. Excellent, good. Um, bah, 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 bah. Paula said, so when you use pivot points, you don't look at moving averages, previous fibs, closings, etc. No, I will, Paula, I definitely will, but pivots are their own trading indicator. If you're trading on pivots, markets, I don't trade very much Microsoft or Apple or Amazon, some, but rare. I trade those off the technicals of the moving averages, the 100 point levels, the fib lines. But when I'm trading SPY and Qs, they work well within the confines of those uh, trading levels, those pivots. So I know where the others are, and I'll look if there's confluences or something that's in the way, which may prevent me from taking a trade. But overall, I rely mostly on the pivots themselves. So uh, Sean asks, how likely is it to get put the stock when selling naked puts. Uh, well, if you start off with a 20 delta, Sean, it's about 20% chance you're gonna get put the stock. What that means is one out of every five times you do this, you're going to get exercised if you don't manage your way out of the position. So it definitely is going to happen. It's not if, it's when, it's going to happen to you. Uh, let's see, Erica said, when writing covered calls, must, must own at least 100 shares of the stock. Is that correct? Absolutely is, yes. You've got to own 100 share increments to be able to write it. When you sell options, you're taking on the obligation for 100 share increments. Same way. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Hey, Lee, could you do me a favor? Drop a link in here, uh, if you would, please, for uh, Monster Market Movers. Guys, go and take advantage. You need that code and, and type the code in Spooky, capital S. Uh, you need that code to be able to take advantage of that, folks. Listen, for $29, the two-hour training that we're going to do live, plus the couple of hours of prerequisites, you go back and watch the ones you feel you need, but the couple of hours of prerequisites in there are outstanding for you. So take advantage of, of what's inside of that members area uh, for it, right? But Spooky is the, uh, the code, capital S, S-P-O-O-K-Y. Excellent. So with that, make it a profitable day. Stay focused on the quest to becoming a great trader. Keep crushing it. And remember, you're just one trade away. Take care, everybody. I will see all of you at our next update. Now, I'll leave the room open a couple of minutes so you guys can grab that link and take advantage of that deeply, deeply discounted training that I've done for our Halloween special. All right, everyone. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.